If you're one of those lucky people who owns a home and owns some form of electric vehicle, the chances are that you probably want to do everything you possibly can to fuel that vehicle for as cheaply as possible and in an environmentally friendlier way as possible. And yes, I know all of the major charging networks these days proudly proclaim that their power is sourced from 100% fossil-free sources of electricity like massive wind farms and grid-scale solar installations. But let's be honest, while they may now meet the requirements for being environmentally friendly, they certainly don't on the criteria of affordability. Yes, I know, there are overheads associated with charging networks, and if you don't have charging at home, they may be the only choice. But when a charging network asks you to pay as much as four times the cost per kilowatt hour that it would take to charge at home, and they can't keep a reliable network operational on your hard-earned pennies and brand new equipment partly paid for by government grants, then something's not right. Given that public charging is expensive, the chances are you'll probably want to charge at home if possible, and as we've covered many times before on this channel, having photovoltaic solar panels on the roof of your home really is the perfect partner to owning an EV. You get to lock in the effective cost of charging your car long term, and you also get to lower your electricity bill too. But, well, getting photovoltaic solar panels on the roof of your home is a pretty costly thing. You have to not only buy the panels and pay someone to put them on the roof of your home, but you also have some other associated costs to factor in, like the cost of electrical permitting and sometimes even repairs to your roof. Depending on the design and state of repair of your roof, your current electrical system and how big you want your solar system to be, you could be looking at anywhere from $10,000 all the way up to $50,000 or more. So why are we seeing so many adverts online, sometimes even placed before our videos, advertising solar panels for zero down and zero monthly payments? Are they really true or are they... You know, let's look into that. Before we get into today's video, I want to acknowledge that this video is sponsored by Energy Sage, a company that helps you find and compare verified local solar installation companies, and also lets you sign up for community solar projects if you don't have the ability to put solar panels on the roof of your home. And the sceptical among you might assume that means we're trying to dissuade you away from any companies that state they can put solar on your home for free so that we can send you all towards our video sponsor instead. But that's not actually the purpose of this video. This video is about making sure you understand that when a company tells you you can get solar for free, eh, you're paying in a different way. That said, as I will explain a little later in this video, if you do absolutely want to get solar on the roof of your home and you can't finance it through more conventional means, it is possible to trade a lack of liquidity for power if you're willing to give up something else instead. So let's just dive off the deep end and get thoroughly stuck in. The basic premise of the majority of the ads you'll see online about free solar panels is that it's possible to have solar panels put on the roof of your home that will provide your home with clean green energy with zero money down and zero monthly payment. That promise is, of course, to get you to sign up for information and then ultimately sell your information to solar installers, which normally means you can become bombarded with sales calls, or for you to sign up with an agreement to get those free solar panels on the roof of your home. But the reality is, sadly, there's no such thing as free solar panels. The closest you'll get to that is doing what I did when I got my solar system two years ago. We remortgaged our home to a lower interest rate, shifting from a 5% mortgage to a 3% mortgage, and then we took out a solar loan that, when combined with the new lower monthly mortgage payment, was still less than the money we were previously paying for just the mortgage on its own. Even then, though, my solar panels weren't technically free, and neither are those free solar panels that you see advertised everywhere. Instead, such ads are usually referring to something known as a solar lease or a power purchase agreement. 
Instead of a traditional purchase agreement where you agree with your solar installation company to pay them a specific amount of money to install the solar panels on your roof, you are essentially agreeing to let a company install solar panels on the roof of your home and then to agree to pay that company for the energy that those solar panels generate. Or to put it another way, instead of funding your solar installation through a traditional loan, a cash-out remortgage, emptying your savings account or a combination of all three, you're signing away all ownership of those solar panels and you're agreeing to pay the solar company money for every kilowatt hour of electricity generated by that solar system that you consume over the length of the solar lease. It's a bit like me asking if I could... Well, perhaps bring my seven chickens to your garden where they'll eat the bugs, fertilise your lawn and lay eggs. But if you want any of the eggs, you'll have to pay me for them. Mates rates, of course. Although, I'll probably add a couple of bucks because my eggs are free range after all. And there's a surcharge for olive eggers because those eggs are just so darned pretty. If, in my lovely chickeny scenario... You just want to boast about getting fresh eggs every day, but you're not interested in mucking out the coop a few times a year, don't want to make the trip to the local feed store a couple of times a month, and most certainly do not want to have a nightly conversation with Carolyn, the oldest chicken in the flock, on why the nest box is not an appropriate place to settle down for the evening. Then maybe borrowing my chickens and paying me money for every egg they lay is perfect. But... I'm guessing if you're already committed to the idea of having chickens in your garden, you'd rather they were yours, not mine. Even if those mates' rates are still cheaper than the free-range eggs you buy at whole paycheck. The same is true of solar panels. If you're going to go to the trouble of having solar panels installed on the roof of your home, actually owning the panels and not having to pay for the electricity they use on a per kilowatt hour basis is far better. And with my facetious chicken analogy behind us, let's look at why that is. First, when you sign up for a solar lease or a PPA, you're giving a solar production company permission to install solar panels on the roof of your home that you ultimately do not own. You are effectively leasing out your roof to someone else, someone who has an interest in the roof and the panels on it. Depending on where you live, this usually means that if you want to sell your home and the solar lease is still in effect, you're faced with one of three choices. You either have to break your solar lease or PPA and have the solar company come out and remove the panels from your roof prior to sale, which usually means you would have to pay out of pocket to have them removed, or... Two, you have to buy out the solar lease or PPA with a cash sum prior to the sale of your home. Yes, you can then recoup the costs of doing so when you sell your home, but obviously that will eat into your profits. Or finally, the person buying your home has to assume the solar lease or PPA, either with the original terms intact or sometimes by negotiating new terms with the solar company in question. While all of this might not be as daunting as you might expect, a study in 2019 from Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory found that 77% of solar leases pass to the new homeowner when a house is sold. 20% of respondents in the same survey said their home sale fell through because of solar leases. In other words, it could ultimately take longer to sell your home if you have a solar lease agreement rather than owning panels. This is in contrast to a traditional home sale with your solar panels included where the value of your solar panels adds to the asking price of your home and any outstanding loan you might have will instantly get paid off in full and then some when you sell the house. How much money do you stand to earn? Well, a study from Zillow a few years ago found that homes with solar installations tend to sell for 4.1% more than an identical home without. Moreover, most homes with solar panels on them will sell between 20 and 50% faster than homes without, at least according to the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in the US. And if you are worried about solar panel warranties, they're usually really easily transferred between an old and new owner of a house. 
At this point, some people who are pro-solar lease and PPA will say things like, yeah, but you don't have to pay to fix things when stuff breaks with a solar lease because you don't own the panels and they are ultimately the responsibility of the solar provider. And you'd be right. The responsibility to keep things in good condition lies with the owner of the panels, not with you. But to be clear, if you spec a good quality solar system with name brand panels, a high quality inverter system, and you pay qualified professionals to install it, the chances are that your solar system will come with a pretty lengthy warranty. Off the top of my head, I think the panels on my home are warranted for 30 years and the inverter is warranted for 15. The installation itself, that is the shortest warranty period, but it's still good for 10 whole years. 30 years. If only electric cars came with that kind of warranty period, eh? Meanwhile, the systems installed as part of a solar leasing agreement are more likely to be designed to maximise low initial outlay, so they may not be designed with lifespan in mind. Of course, the other thing to bear in mind about solar leasing and PPA programmes is that if you ever need to have any kind of work done on your roof or indeed to your home electrical system, you will also need to get buy-in from that solar lease provider. They'll also need to get access to your roof from time to time in order to carry out inspections and the like, with appropriate notice of course, and all of that can restrict what you can and can't do to your home. But what about those tax credits I hear you ask? Some of the ads we're seeing online talk about free government programmes that let us put solar on our roofs for nothing down. Well, first things first, I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV or, or YouTube, but simply put, while some of these ads might exaggerate the truth a little to make it feel like you'll be the one benefiting, or come up with some random bill that didn't actually pass or never existed, yeah, some of the most unscrupulous companies just plain old lie. The only way you, as a citizen, get to benefit from any tax breaks is if you actually buy the system you're having put on your home. If the solar panels don't belong to you and belong to someone else, they are the ones who get to claim the tax breaks. The same is true if your local area offers grants for people to go solar. If you didn't buy the panels, you don't get the money. And of course, you also don't get to benefit from any money that you might earn from periods when the solar panels generate more power than you actually use. Excess power that goes back to the grid doesn't come to your pocket, it goes to the solar leasing company instead. Right now, solar tax breaks in the US are pretty darn healthy, with any solar panel systems installed over the next 10 years eligible for up to 30% of the total cost of the system in terms of tax breaks. Obviously, I am again not a tax professional, but you'll need to actually have a tax liability equal to the amount of the rebate in order to claim the full 30% off your taxes. But always consult with an actual tax professional before making any massive decisions based on tax credits and don't come yelling at me if you don't and you get it wrong. But here is the thing. If you are getting a photovoltaic solar panel installation worth $20,000 on the roof of your home and you're able to claim back 30% in tax breaks, that's a lot of money. Moreover, if you opt for an actual solar loan package, which is what I did when I purchased my panels, you'll likely be able to use that tax credit to pay down some of your outstanding loan amount if you so wish. Or you could use that tax credit to pay down a credit card or some other financial obligation. That's actually what we did last year because the interest rate on our solar loan was far less than the interest rate on our credit card. Which brings me to the final point that's worth making here. If you are in a situation where you want solar panels for nothing down, there's a much better option for you in the form of zero down solar loans. Not every financial institution that offers solar financing offers them, but because solar panels have a really long lifespan, equally long warranties, and are a long-term investment, and banks like long-term financial agreements, you might find it possible to take out a longer loan period than you might if you put down a traditional deposit. 
And as long as you stick to the terms of that agreement and make payments, the panels on your roof are yours. Any incentives that come your way are yours. And if your solar panels generate excess power and you live somewhere with feed-in tariffs, the credits or money you earn from that excess power, they're yours too. Oh, and those tax credits I did mention earlier, most solar loan products offered by banks and financial institutions have no prepayment penalties and will happily refactor or recalculate your monthly payments if you make a lump sum deposit against that loan amount. And again, of course, that can also help your credit score long term. Which brings me to today's video sponsor, Energy Sage. Energy Sage is an online service in the US that helps homeowners connect with local verified solar installers who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing photovoltaic solar panels on the roof of your home and can help you join a community solar project as well. We used Energy Sage when we were looking for installers willing to help us put solar panels on the roof of our home, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable, and even put us in touch with an amazing credit union to help us finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. And if you live in California, now is the time to go solar to maximise those potential savings. There's a new state policy, Net Metering 3.0, which goes into effect at 5pm Pacific on April 14th this year. And that drops your potential solar savings by up to 60%. In order to qualify for the current rate, a higher savings, you'll want to get in touch with local installers now to lock in your home. To avoid price gouging, high sales pressure tactics, and to get quotes from trusted, verified installers, follow the link below to sign up for Energy Sage's free, no obligation service and get that ball rolling today. If you do choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your solar project, we will get a small referral fee, so you'll be helping us out too. So, there you have it, the truth behind those free solar panel videos and articles you might see popping up from time to time in your news feeds. It's something that the team at Energy Sage has tackled before in their own article, which I'll also link to below. Basically, these free solar panel companies may promise you the sun and the moon and all the power that you can possibly consume, but be careful it's not a cheese puff on a stick, a marshmallow with a chunk out of it, or my elderly chicken pooping on your car. And on that note, we're done with today's video. And if you want to know more about the classic Mac behind me, stick around until after the credits and I'll tell you more. If you like this video, you know what to do and feel free to tip us with a super thanks. The comments are open for your thoughts, as is our Discord chat room, link below. And if you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or Patreon subscription. You'll also find links to Kofi, Bitcoin and our swag store. And do check us out on Mastodon. Our server is a pretty cool place. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our self-driving tier supporters Mike Weeder, Tony Moss, Linda Irish, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Moore Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazla in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Ascentar and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world thanks to our top tier supporters Robert Flannery, CPU Freak 101, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burbridge, Dave Kitchen, Aaron Hahn, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and Ian. Finally, thanks to Energy Sage for supporting this video. Follow that link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make the step towards energy self sufficiency, either with solar on your home or through a local community solar project. I'll be back soon with more videos, as will the rest of the team, but until then, keep evolving! Joining me on set today is my MacBook Pro 1,1 from 2006, which doesn't feel like it was very long ago, but that was a, a pretty long time ago. It's 2023 now, so it's 17 years ago. So this is a 17 year old Mac. And that blows my mind because back when I started collecting Macs and using Macs, they used uh, PowerPC architectures. And this is an Intel based machine. And of course the modern Macs all use Apple's own silicon. So this was a, a very new kind of concept back in the day. It was the very first Intel based power Mac. It's a 15 inch model. It still works in every way. And it's one of my favorites to use because it has Firewire 
and it has a display uh, connector on it and it has Ethernet, has an Ethernet socket, which it's using right now. It also has an airport card in it. I think this one has been upgraded with an SSD, a solid state drive, but it still works, it still runs. And believe it or not, it also has a battery that holds a charge. When we emigrated to the US in 2015, my partner and I purchased a brand new battery for that and it's a removable battery so you just slot it in and we used it to keep the kids occupied when we were packing up the house and making a long trip with the kids so they didn't um, kick up a fuss. I know. Babysitter. Technology. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>